Hi, this is Dr. Walters. Uh, this uh, very brief overview or introductory lecture will introduce you to the work of Emile Durkheim, one of the uh, most influential of all uh, of the uh, European sociologists. This introductory lecture is a little bit different than the ones uh, than the other ones that you have uh, seen before and it will be followed by a second vodcast using the more conventional PowerPoints. Here my goal is a little bit different. I'd like to provide a brief introduction to the, especially to the reading in the chapter written by Louis A. Kozer on Emil Durkheim. Uh, that chapter provides a way of approaching sociological theory and one that you may yourself wish to use as you think through the parameters of your final paper. Uh, Koser is or was uh, part of what we call the Frankfurt School uh, and what he, what this means is that he looks at ideas as emerging from a particular individual in a particular point of time uh, addressing particular problems and shaped by a number of factors that are part of his or her socio-cultural milieu. So Kozer wants students to see and understand the ideas of the social theorist, but at the same time also understand or see the man, in this instance the man, who is shaped by a number of factors that define his struggles and successes, his family, his friends, his peers, his involvement with his community, his professional struggles to locate for himself, in this instance, a very secure position within the French Academy and actually one of the very first sociologists to do so. Uh, his involvement in, in the community, in this instance, uh, France at the turn of the century, a country and a, and a a place that he loved and to put forwards and to which he felt extremely loyal uh, despite the fact that he was slightly marginalized as a consequence of being from uh, Alsace-Lorraine and also Jewish at, at a time when uh, the assimilation of Jews into the dominant culture of France was somewhat problematic uh, having attained their, uh, for example, right to vote only two or three generations early during the French Revolution in 1789. So the goal here is to, or for Kozer, is to locate the work uh, within this framework and use that framework to explain uh, what it was that the social theorist was looking at and why he viewed it the way that he did. Uh, this, for example, might explain some of the contrasts that you will see between uh, Karl Marx and Emile Durkheim. Marx was born in a completely different uh, socio-historical context, uh, Germany between 18, 18, which is the time of his birth, and 1883, the time of his death. Germany was a, a rather repressive regime at the time, uh, whereas France was already a third republic. Uh, for, uh, Durkheim was born in 1858, died in uh, uh, 1918, right around the time of the signing of the, treatise of, of the Treaty of Versailles. So, uh, as as Kozer notes, what he what he really wants is what were the social origins of the theorist? How did those affect what he thought? Uh, did the distinctive location of his parents uh, play a role? What were the generational ties that linked him to uh, earlier social theorists? What are the what were the impact of specific historical events on the life of uh, and the thinking of this particular uh, individual? What did crucial events such as uh, wars or depression or economic circumstances uh, shape? Uh, shape how he thought or what what kinds of problems interested him or her. Uh, it's also important to consider the social position, the theorist lifestyle, the level of education of his or her parents. All of these things come into play in forming our, or shaping how a theorist thought uh, and, and what it was that theorist was addressing. Once again, I, I provide you with this overview and, and have included this chapter by Louis A. Kozer because I think it will give you some ideas on how you might want to form or shape your own work at the end of the semester.